let's recap where we left off on Friday. Using my numbers, again, you use your numbers. Um, I had found that I had 10 birds, I'm sorry, I had um, 10 bugs, I had 10 plants, and I had three birds. So the top of this pyramid is gonna be the three birds. And the three birds was found over the area of 300,000 square meters. The plants were found over an area that was 0.1 meters by 0.1 meters, which when I multiply that together is 0.01 meters squared. And the 10 bugs were found over an area that was a half a meter by a half a meter, which is 0.25 meters squared. So then what I did is I had to scale everything up to this 300,000 uh, meters squared. So I take 10 plants is found in 0.1 meters squared how many plants would be found in 300,000 meters squared? And when I cross multiply, I get that. Divide both sides by 0.01, and I end up with this, where I get 300 million plants. That's the base of my my pyramid of numbers so it would look not drawn to scale like 300 million plants again the base of every food web every ecosystem is the producers or the plants or the autotrophs those are all the same thing now i have my bugs i have 10 bugs was bugs was found in point two five meters squared, how many bugs would be found in 300,000 meters squared? Do the cross multiply again, equals 0.25x, and I end up with 12, and I end up with, I believe, 12 million bugs. So next I'm going to have 12 million bugs. The top of this is going to be my three birds. Very small, of course not to scale. But is this ecosystem stable? Yes. One reason, because the lower trophic levels are bigger than the higher trophic levels. Another reason I can look at is assuming 10% efficiency. 10% of 300 million is 30 million. And so I only have 12 million bugs. So based on that logic, this is stable, okay? Because I have more than 10%, so I'm not gonna be running short. And 10% of 12 million is 1.2 million, and I have way less birds than that. So based on, and again, 10% is just a basic idea. It's not real accurate, um, but it just gives you a basic sense. Based on 10% ecological efficiency, also, it is stable. So now, is it good to only look at the numbers rather than their size? And the answer is no. It's really best to look at size, but it's much harder to do. So it is best to look at a pyramid of biomass but it is harder to do. Okay. Uh, lastly, 
we're going to look back at the first page and see our hypothesis. And our hypothesis is if there are more producers than consumers present in the ecosystem, then this ecosystem is stable. And so does our data support this? That's the conclusion. And our answer would be um, this is a stable ecosystem. since there are a lot more producers, or autotrophs, another good name for them, than consumers, or producers than primary consumers and secondary consumers, okay? And then specific, give specific evidence. So we could say there were in my instance, you use your own data, 300 million plants or grass and only 12 million insects. So there are many more plants, or again, I'm going to use the word autotrophs, which are plants.